Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We've been promoted to a, a slightly bigger room this year. I thought I was going to have to ask you to cuddle up cause, so we didn't feel a bit lonely, but there's a nice number, so thank you for coming. Um, the topic is cardiac CT and MRI in difficult patients, and to some extent what I'd like most people to leave here with is the idea that cardiac imaging is not especially difficult and too many radiologists run away from it. As long as you know some basic stuff, as in any <laughs> other imaging modality, you can have an interesting um, experience in, in cardiac imaging. Um, we'll have a panel discussion at the end. I hope some of you will be able to stay for that. This is a lovely day, of course, so I won't be offended if some people slip off. And I'd just like to bring your attention to a National Society meeting we have in, in the UK in Glasgow about um, cardiovascular imaging. You can see that on the panel there. The sort of boring stuff, please don't forget to stick your name in your sticker on your evaluation or else you won't get any points. Um, please don't take any pictures with a flash. Um, phones off. I've actually turned mine off completely so I won't be embarrassed. And uh, if you do have a question, please come up to the microphone. So I'm just going to start off by saying what's the difficult patient? Well, it's all of these things. It's the large person, the small, the very young, the very old, the sick, the breathless, the tachycardic, the anxious, or those with implants. But in fact, if you have um, good techniques and good ideas and know what you want to achieve, in fact, most patients are actually fairly straightforward. Um, people often worry about imaging kids because the perception of very high radiation dose with CT has fantastic uh, spatial resolution, um, but potentially high dose. And with MR has the opposite problem. Obviously, it's got no radiation, but it has poor spatial resolution. Um, now, this is from a, a slightly older generation CT scanner, 128, so a lot of people have better scanners than this. It doesn't have iterative reconstruction. It's a patient under a GA. They are um, five months old. They weigh only seven kilos. The heart rate's 100. Um, but you can apply ECG gating to the body examination quite easily, so you get excellent um, delineation of all the anatomical structures. And our pediatric radiologists tend not to use ECG gating, and it, it puzzles me why they don't, because our actually radiation doses for um, ECG gated chest examinations of pediatrics is actually less than um, those done without ECG gating. So please use it and use it judiciously with prospective imaging. Um, so the DLP on this was only 12, and you probably get it down to five or six with iterative reconstruction. <laughs> and if you take the same sort of size patient, five kilos, a um, few months old, to MRI, you often get poor uh, signal, particularly on T1-weighted imaging. And you can see here there's a dramatic increase in image quality when you double gate it. This is just to give you some ideas of what you might like to do. When you double gate it, you get more time for signal recovery, and you greatly improve the, the image quality. So you can see the arch absolutely beautifully, even something that's absolutely tiny. What about breathless people? Well, just to show you an example of there shouldn't be a problem imaging breathless patients, because this is someone exercising at maximum level in the MRI scanner, where the heart rate's about 150 beats a minute, and you can see them breathing away and we just slow down the, um, the loop speed so you can appreciate it. You can get spectacularly good image quality. There's no reason why you can't make a diagnosis if you want to. Same thing with flow imaging. This is from accelerated flow using an EPI sequence, which is starting to become available. Um, and you can use this in, in a number of ways. One is you can um, use, use it to get uh, fast imaging of the same quality, or you can use it to get very short breath hold images, which may be applicable if you're trying to look at a valve, for instance. But to show you, the, 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 again, to show you some of the uh, um, excess of the quality, and I'll show you a, a data set in a minute of, of the sort of imaging, it, sorry, the uh, data it produces. If you look at the lower scale here, this again is someone exercising an MRI scanner with a heart rate of 140 beats a minute, and that's real time flow imaging. And if you do it and you analyze it, you get this sort of data which is each of these peaks correspond to a heartbeat. And this is aortic flow in peak, uh, in rate of mils per second. So there's a lot of things coming, and a lot of things you can do with your MRI scanners. The sick shouldn't be a problem either. Um, this is a patient with a post-infarct VSD. This is the VSD on FAST, and we use CT a lot for these because it, it properly triages patients whether they, they're going to survive or not because you can put a device on them if the hole's not too big. It doesn't matter their heart rate is 140 beats a minute or they've got a balloon pump because the bit, that's not, the bit that's ill is not working. It's still. So you get beautiful images. 
If they're not so bad, you can do them in the MRI scanner as well, and you can beautifully see the tear in the ventricular septum with a flap running across here and appropriately select these patients for treatment or not. CT is also very useful with uh, relatively small amounts of artifact that you can see whether there's going to be a leak around the device. In this case, there is no leak around this device. And um, the point of showing these two images is that you often get a lot of signal um, artifact around metal on SSFP imaging. But if you use a flash, which is a more sort of 1980s type cardiac MRI sequence, you get really much less artifact and very good image quality. You shouldn't be worried about high heart rates. This is from a dobutamine study. The heart rate is 160 beats a minute. It's been slowed down so you can appreciate it nicely. You just do that by improving the temporal resolution. And this is acquired in an eight second breath hold. There is no problem. You should just get on and have fun. We're going to briefly talk about arrhythmias and gating. We're going to see a little bit more about that. The, the standard cines, you have about 10 heartbeats that are compressed into one heartbeat, and you get an image. And if the different heartbeats are all different, you get rubbish like this. Um, but there are a couple of e quick, easy strategies which you can use. One is prospective gating, where you basically discard the end diastolic data. And the, um, the early systolic data and the early diastolic data get you quite nice image quality. And again, you can use the real-time cines as well. So I'll just give you a little quick overview about what you can do, what you're going to uh, hopefully hear a little bit more about. And I shall just pass over to our, our next speaker, which is Dr. Lowe from Vienna. Dr. Lowe, would you like to come?